means that is understanding quadrilaterals. Before starting any chapter, it's very important to understand the meaning of the chapter. Fine. Like what is written? Understanding. Understanding means samajna. What we are going to understand? Quadrilaterals. Now, this quadrilaterals word This word is completely new for you. Quadrilaterals. First of all, I will explain you what is the meaning of this word. The word quad means four. Fine. And quadrilateral means having four sides. So what is quadrilateral? Quadrilateral means having four sides. Okay. So this is your quadrilateral. So quadrilateral, by listening the word quadrilateral, definitely we will get an idea that it is having four sides. Okay. Now, four sides ko bohat sari chizo ke ho sakti But how we can exactly define the quadrilaterals? Before defining this exactly, we should know some more terms. From this, the first term is I'm writing the term simple curve, simple closed curve. Okay, then open curve, then simple open curve. Okay, definitely. Then the figure is not a polygon. So for any figure, for any 
diagram to be a polygon these are the two important condition first thing it should be a simple closed curve right now only we have discussed what is the meaning of simple closed curve it should be closed also first condition and it should be simple closed and the second thing it should be made up of line segments the four examples the four diagrams which we have seen before were they polygons no they were not polygons why right? because they were not made up of line segments so for polygon these are the two important conditions that it should be made up of line segments and it should be a simple closed curve fine right? so suppose that this is one line segment can we make a closed figure with one line segment no this is two line segments can we make a closed figure with two line segment no still it is open now this is three line segments by using three line segments we are able to make a closed figure so this is the first polygon which is possible so the very first polygon which is possible is what shape we call it this is triangle this is what this is triangle and triangle is a polygon which is having three sides and this is the polygon with minimum number of sides ye kaisa polygon hai jisse kam side se possible hai isse kam side agar hum le jisse do side le to usse koi bhi polygon banana possible nahi hai there is not a polygon having only two sides so for a polygon the minimum number of sides should be three sides now let's make a polygon with four sides this is a polygon with how many sides four sides so this four sided polygon is called quadrilateral this is the main topic which we will study throughout this chapter that is quadrilateral quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides to so, quadrilateral ko agar hame define karna it's very easy now we can define quadrilateral that quadrilateral is a polygon which has four sides and if i am saying it's a polygon it means it is closed curve and that also simple closed curve and it is made up of line segments okay so quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides so quadrilateral is a polygon which has four sides so now we can easily define what is quadrilateral quadrilateral is a polygon means it a quadrilateral is a simple closed curve made up of four line segments in this way also you can see either you can directly say quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides or we can say quadrilateral is a simple closed curve made up of four line segments now if we will have five sides then it is called pentagon okay okay students till now from class 6 and till class 11 12 you people have to learn a lot of terms of science also maths also so it's very difficult to memorize all the terms i to uh, remember that what the term actually means so as we all have logics we used to create some logics to learn any term like what i have created the logic uh, for pentagon in my mind say i remember that i always used to buy a pen of rupees 5 so that 5 that number 5 i have related with pen this 5 rupees i have related with pen so whenever i see pentagon then i remember 5 rupees so five sides is of pentagon similarly if it is having six sides 1 2 3 4 5 6 to six sides wale hum shape ko kya karenge it is called hexagon this word is new for you six sides hexagon how i have learned this word in six also i am having x and in hexagon also i am having x so in this way we can remember then six sides polygon is called hexagon fine and at 
at the end now you will say see pentagon hexagon fine so triangle is a polygon with three sides quadrilateral is a polygon with four sides pentagon is a polygon with five sides hexagon is a polygon with six sides similarly if i will increase the number of sides like if i will draw seven sides 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 43 44 45 46 47 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65 66 67 68 69 70 71 72 73 74 75 76 77 78 79 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 88 89 90 91 92 93 94 95 96 97 98 99 
Okay, if we have not heard also, then also I will repeat. Supposingly, this is my square. I am drawing some lines inside. Fine. And now this is my pentagon. In this also I am drawing some lines inside. Regular quadrilateral. This is having one, two, three, four sides. 
So four sided polygon is called quadrilateral. So regular quadrilateral is called square. Fine. So uh, for any figure, any polygon to be regular, its all sides should have equal length. Now if a pentagon is having all the five sides equal, then it will be called regular pentagon. If a hexagon is having all six sides equal, then it will be called regular hexagon. Similarly, regular heptagon. Fine. Uh, for, for triangle, we have a specific name, equilibrate triangle. For quadrilateral, also we have a specific name that is a square. But in case of pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, we don't have any specific name for the regular polygon. In that case, we simply add the word regular before it. Like regular pentagon, regular hexagon, regular heptagon. If it is only pentagon, then we are not sure that whether all sides are equal or unequal. But if it is written regular pentagon, means all sides should be, all sides of that pentagon are equal. Fine. So I think we all are clear with these types of polygon. Convex polygon versus concave polygon and regular polygon versus irregular polygon. Convex and concave polygon are differentiated on the basis of its diagonals. And regular and irregular polygons are differentiated on the basis of its length of sides of polygon. Fine. Now we will move ahead. Uh, we are going to study about the angle sum property of quadrilateral or angle sum property of any polygon. Okay, first of all, we will discuss about angle sum property of triangle. This we have studied in class seventh also that by adding all the three angles of a triangle, when we will add this all three angles of triangle, what we will get? 180 degree. Angle A plus angle B plus angle C in triangle ABC is equal to 180 degree. This we have already studied in class 7. Now, you people will come to know that in case of, if it is quadrilateral. Like in quadrilateral, how many sides? 1, 2, 3 and 4 sides. 4 sides and how many angles it have? 1, 2, 3 and 4 angles. So, angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D is equal to 360 degree. Now definitely question must be coming in your mind that how it is coming 360 degree. Is there any proof of it? Yes. Then definitely it is having one proof. A very simple one. We can see that we can divide any quadrilateral in two triangles. You can see. This is triangle 1 and this is triangle 2. I can divide any quadrilateral. Any quadrilateral which is having four sides. Quadrilateral having four sides in two triangles. So, triangle 1, these three angles will give, sum of these three angles will give 180 degree. Similarly, in triangle 2, these three angles will give sum 180 degree. When we will add all the angles of triangle 1 and triangle 2, it will give the angles of quadrilateral and 180 plus 180 will become 360 degree. So, similarly, we can find out the angle sum property of any polygon. How we are finding this angle sum property of any polygon? By dividing that polygon in some number of triangles. We have to divide that polygon into the number of triangles and depending on the number of triangles, you will get the angle sum property. This is the general formula for finding the angle sum property of any polygon. And that is n minus 2 into 180 degree. Where n is number of sides of polygon. I can verify you this for these triangle and quadrilateral also. Like see, in case of triangle, what is the value of n? Or how many sides it has? 1, 2 and 3. So put 3 here. 3 minus 2, 1. 1 into 180 degree. That is equal to 180 degree. That's why we are getting the triangle then angle sum property of quadrilateral. How many sides? 1, 2, 3, 4. So put 4 here. 4 minus 2, 2. Then 2 into 180, 360 degree. So this is the general formula for finding angle sum property of any polygon. Now supposedly I am having pentagon. Pentagon, how many sides? 5 sides. 5 minus 2. That is 
3. So 3 into 180 degree. So its angle sum will be 3 into 180, 540 degree. Fine. And this is by formula. How we can uh, show it practically? Like see, I can divide pentagon into how many triangles? 3, 1, 2 and 3. 1, 2 and 3. So this triangle will also have sum of all angles 180. This triangle will also have sum of all angles 180. Similarly, this triangle will also have sum of all angles 180. So definitely again it will be 180 into 3. So this, form, this formula gives n minus 2 is giving actually the number of triangles formed in a given polygon. When the baki polygon ke under kitne triangles ban paare hai wo hi bataega aapko n minus 2. Uh, we can see like if it is 6 sided polygon that is hexagon. Then ya 6 minus 2 aapko ke kitna aega? 4. Iska matlab agar aap hexagon banate hai to uske under kitne triangles banne chahi hai humse kam. Char, just count the sides 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 sided polygon it is hexagon. Now see how many triangles it has. Triangle 1, triangle 2, triangle 3 and triangle 4. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Fine. So 4 triangles, 6 minus 2, 4. 18, 4 is 72. So in this way we can find out that uh, angles are property for any polygon by using this general formula. If it is triangle, then the sum of all the three angles is 180 degree. If it is quadrilateral, sum of all the four angles is 360 degree. If it is pentagon, sum of all the five angles is 540 degree. If it is hexagon, sum of all the six angles is 720 degree. No need to learn the value of this angle. You have to simply learn this formula. Actually, no need to learn the formula also. By drawing the diagram, by dividing into the number of triangles, you can simply find out. Okay, find three triangles. So three into one eighty. Triangle. We are very much triangle here. That triangle is having the sum one eighty degree. Now in this also, just divide into triangles. Four triangles. So four into one eighty degree. If sometimes we forget this formula also, then also we are able to find angle sum property of any polygon. Fine. Now, right till now, till now, we people were talking about. The angles are property of interior angles. Fine, these are the interior angles. Okay, so now we are talking about the formula or the angles are property. We were talking about only about interior angles. Now, what about the exterior angles? These are the exterior angles. If I talk about this, then this is my exterior angle. This is my exterior angle and this is also my exterior angle. Fine. In this case, this one is exterior. Exterior means which is outside. Okay? So you can easily see that the more interior angles will be, the more the exterior angles will be. Interior angles can be different from each other. But the exterior angle can be different from any other polygon. If it is a three-sided polygon, then also the sum of exterior angles will be 360 degrees. If it is a four-sided polygon, then also sum of exterior angle is 360 degree. If it is a 5 sided polygon, hai, then also sum of exterior angle will be 360 degree. Now this question I am giving it to you. You have to find out that how or why the sum of exterior angle is always 360 degree. This is assignment for you for some day. Otherwise one day I will show it in a video that how sum of exterior angle of any polygon is only 360 degree. This we can prove with the help of an activity also. Now we will do one question regarding this angle sum property. Okay, now here is a question regarding angle sum property of this polygon. First of all, we have to see that how many sides this polygon has. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This polygon is having 5 sides. Let me name this A. B, C, D and E. So this is A, B, C, D, E polygon which is having 5 sides. So for 5 sides we have to think, we have to think that 
what can be the Anderson property of this polynomial? Okay, and the question is find the value of x, y, and z. First of all, here it is x. Here we are having y, and here we are having z. Uh, by looking at the diagram, we can easily identify that y and 110 degree. They are forming a linear pair since x a line. So in a line, they are forming linear pair. So by using the formula of linear pair, we can find the value of y. Similarly, this z and 60 degree, they are also lying on a single line. Fine. So they, the value of z can also be calculated by using the formula of linear pair. Fine. After calculating z only, we can calculate the value of x. So let us find out y. y plus 110 degree is equal to 180 degree. Reason we have to specify it's compulsory. Otherwise, we can't understand by which method you are finding the value of y. y is equal to 180 degree minus 110 degree. So y is equal to 70 degree. Fine. Similarly, z plus 60 degree is equal to 180 degree. Again, the reason is same. Linear pair. z is equal to 180 degree minus 60 degree. So, z is equal to 120 degree. y and z we have found. Now, we have to find the x. Fine. So, what we will write? Angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D plus angle E. Five angles are there. Five shared polygon it is. So, L minus 2 into 180 degree. 5 minus 2. That is 3. 3 into 180 degree. How much I am getting? 540 degree. Reason is angle sum property of which polygon it is? Pentagon. Right? So that we have to write. Now angle A, what I will write? 70 degree. Angle B is X. Angle C is 110 degree. Now we are talking about integral angles only. Angle B is Z and angle E is again X. Is equal to 540 degree. Now the value of Z is already known to us. Z is 120 degree. Okay. And this X and X, they will form 2X. 2X are there. 70 plus 110. It will be 180. 180 plus 120. That is 300 degree. Similarly, we will solve like we are solving simple equations. So, x is equal to 240 degree divided by 2. x we are getting as 120 degree. Fine. So, this is the value of x, y and Z. In this way, we can solve any problems related to angle sum property of any polygon. If three sides are there, then we can use angle sum property of triangle. If four sides, we can use angle sum property of quadrilateral. Depending on that, the total sum will change. Fine. Now, I will give you one formula, uh, just which is the relation between exterior angle and number of sides of a polygon. Okay. So here is the formula that number of sides of any polygon. Like supposedly the question is find the number of sides of polygon if measure of each exterior angle is 20 degree. Fine. So in that case what you have to do? You have to divide 360 degree by 20 degree. And this formula can be used vice versa also. Like if measure of each exterior angle is given then we can find number of sides of any polygon or if Number of sides of polygon is given, then we can find measure of each exterior angle. Then this will come on left side and this will go on denominator. Fine. So these formula can be used vice versa also. 
So number of sides of any polygon is equal to 360 degree upon measure of each exterior angle. And the important thing, this formula is applicable only in case of regular polygons. Regular polygons means all sides of the polygon are equal. If the sides are unequal, then we, can, we can't use this formula to find number of sides or to find measure of each exterior angle. So it's very important to check that whether we are talking about a regular polygon or not. Then only we can think of this formula. Fine. And supposedly interior angle is given to you. If interior angle is given, then you can find the exterior angle by subtracting it from 180 degrees. Why? Because interior angle and exterior angle of any polygon. Like see this is interior angle and this is exterior angle. Always interior angle and exterior angle of any polygon form a line. Means linear pair. So if interior angle is known to you, then you can subtract this from 180 and you will get the exterior angle and then you can find the number of sides. And this is another important point that triangle is a polygon with minimum number of sides that I have already discussed also. That we can't have any polygons with two sides. So the minimum number of sides required is three. So triangle is a polygon with minimum number of sides and maximum value of each exterior angle. This is also very important that maximum value of each exterior angle and that is 120 degree. How it is coming? See, this formula is applicable for equi uh, regular polygons. So, in case of triangle, the regular polygon is equilateral triangle. In equilateral triangle, measure of each interior angle is 60 degree. So, the, if the measure of each interior angle possible is 60 degree, this is the minimum interior angle possible for regular polygon. So the measure of exterior angle will be 120 degree. Fine. So this is also one of the important points from where questions can be framed that which polygon is possible with minimum number of sides that is triangle and is having maximum value of each exterior angle and that is 120 degree. Fine. So I think this formula of exterior angle that angles of property for exterior angles. Sum of exterior angles of any polygon is 360 degree. This formula we can use to find number of sides of any polygon. Fine. Now we are going to cover the most important topic of this chapter that is types of quadrilateral. And the types of quadrilateral which we are going to study now that will form your foundation for your hierarchy. Here I have written different types of quadrilateral. I have mentioned here the three quadrilaterals. You have to understand all the properties of this quadrilateral carefully because when you will be going in class 9 or whenever you will be studying the chapters ahead, definitely you, you have to use these properties of quadrilateral to solve different types of questions. So it's very important to understand all these properties of this quadrilateral by heart. If, if you will simply try to learn it, then it's not possible to get all the properties and to memorize it for future also. So you have to understand it word by word and line by line that what it actually means or that you have to understand for the, first of all what is its figure and how you have to visualize it. Fine. First of all, this is the first type of quadrilateral that is trapezium. This is the quadrilateral with minimum number of properties. Fine. As soon as you will move ahead, the number of properties will go on increasing. Fine. So this is trapezium. Trapezium, this name is quite new for you. But this is the most simplest quadrilateral you can say. Because in this quadrilateral, you have to remember only one property. You can see that this is quadrilateral, so all must be having confusion that we, we people are talking only about the particular polygon that is quadrilateral. Quadrilateral means four sides. So you can see that all these quadrilaterals are having four sides. So in trapezium, any one pair of opposite sides are parallel. It should not be equal, it should be parallel. Fine. So one pair of opposite sides are 
tan any one pair either like in this case you can see that these two lines are ab is parallel to bc fine i can draw a trapezium like this also and this these two sides are parallel so any one pair of any one it's not compulsory that these two should be equal or parallel no there is not no such rule this is also not a rule that they should be equal no nothing only one simple rule that opposite sides of this any one pair of opposite sides should be parallel so this is trapezium if in any quadrilateral one pair of opposite sides are parallel then you can put it in the category of trapezium now next is kite which you people must have fly it in the air but right now you have to understand what are the different properties of kite first property is like you can diagram only you can see that these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal fine acha yahan pe agar aap dhyan de to ye do aapko different word thode dikh rahe hain ek hi adjacent aur ek hi opposite अपोजिट तो हमें बहुत अच्छे से समझ में आ जाता है भाई आमने और सामने वाली चीजें अपोजिट है ठीक है अगर मैं यहाँ हूं तो जो जस्ट मेरे अपोजिट मेरे जो सामने पड़ेगा दैट इज माई अपोजिट ठीक है लेकिन एडजस्टेड वर्ड में हम बहुत कंफ्यूज होते हैं तो एडजस्टेड वर्ड को आपको ध्यान से समझना है एडजस्टेड मतलब साथ वाला जो जस्ट उससे अटैच एडजस्टेड चीज हमेशा जो होगी उससे अटैच में होगी जस्ट उसके बगल में होगी ठीक है तो एडजस्टेड टू पेयर ऑफ एडजस्टेड साइड लिखा है मैंने यहाँ पे अपोजिट साइड्स नहीं लिखा है आप ध्यान दें इस बात को ये दोनों एडजस्टेड साइड्स हैं ए बी एंड ए बी ये दोनों अटैच हैं सो दे आर एडजस्टेड साइड्स सिमिलरली बी सी एंड डी सी दे आर ऑल्सो एडजस्टेड साइड्स ठीक है ए बी और सी बी अपोजिट है ये दोनों अपोजिट है और ये दोनों भी अपोजिट है तो हम अपोजिट साइड्स की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं हम किसकी बात कर रहे हैं एडजस्टेड साइड्स की जो एक दूसरे से जुड़े हुए होंगे सो टू पेयर्स two pairs of adjacent sides are equal this is one pair and this is another pair so we can see from this diagram that in kite two pair of adjacent sides should be equal in this only one pair of opposite sides should be parallel isme sirf ek hi pair chahiye tha to isliye bas koi bhi ek pair ka parallel hona zaruri tha ek zaruri hai uske alawa zyada ho to usse bhi koi problem nahi hai lekin trapezium agar usse hame kehna hai to at least i want one pair should be parallel और यहां पर अगर मुझे किसी को काइट बोलना है तो मुझे वहां पे दो पेयर ऑफ एडजस्टेड साइड शुड बी इक्वल देन ओनली आई कैन पुट इट इन द कैटेगरी ऑफ काइट फाइन और जो उसकी डायगनल्स अगर आप ध्यान दें तो उसकी डायगनल्स यहाँ पे 90 डिग्री बना रहे हैं तो डायगनल्स इन द सेंट एट 90 डिग्री फाइन सो एज वी हैव मूव टू काइट वन प्रॉपर्टी हैज increase fine so no need to worry about that the properties are increasing you have to simply understand all the properties now next is parallelogram this is one of the important i can say most important quadrilateral is parallelogram fine to so, parallelogram ko agar aap dhyan se dekhe to ye thoda sa humne isko ट्रीट करके बनाया हुआ है और इसकी मैंने प्रॉपर्टीज आप देख लीजिए क्या लिखा है कि पैरलोग्राम की जो अपोजिट साइड अब यहाँ पे अपोजिट की बात की जा रही है ए बी इज अपोजिट टू बी सी एंड ए बी इज अपोजिट टू बी सी फाइन सो अपोजिट साइड आर इक्वल एंड पैरल ऑल्सो बोथ द थिंग्स आर देर दे आर पैरल एज वेल एज देर आर इक्वल ए बी इज इक्वल टू बी सी ए बी इज इक्वल टू बी सी सो दे आर इक्वल ऑल्सो एंड दे आर पैरल ऑल्सो अपोजिट साइड ऑफ पैरलोग्राम आर इक्वल एंड पैरल पैरल होने की वजह से इसका नाम क्या पड़ा है पैरलोग्राम फाइन नाउ अपोजिट एंगल्स आर इक्वल दिस एंगल ए इज इक्वल टू एंगल सी दीज आर अपोजिट एंगल्स तो इनका जो अपोजिट एंगल्स है वो कैसे होंगे इक्वल होंगे एंड बी इज इक्वल टू डी एंगल ए और एंगल सी आपको दोनों थोड़े ऑप्टिज एंगल दिख रहे होंगे फाइन और एंगल बी और एंगल डी किस टाइप के एंगल दिख रहे हैं एक्यूट एंगल सो सेकेंड पॉइंट इज अपोजिट एंगल्स आर इक्वल दैट यू कैन सी फॉर द डायग्राम ऑल्सो एंड वंस यू विल ड्रॉ द पैरलोग्राम यू कैन वेरीफाई विद द हेल्प ऑफ प्रोटेक्टर ऑल्सो 
Then third point is sum of adjacent angles is one degree. अब यहाँ पे word opposite नहीं है. यहाँ पे क्या word है? Adjacent मतलब साथ में. तो angle A का opposite तो C था. लेकिन angle A के adjacent में कौन है? Angle A के adjacent में दो लोग हैं. Angle B is also adjacent to angle A. And angle D is also adjacent to angle A. इन दोनों का भी pair adjacent का है. और इन दोनों का pair भी adjacent का है. तो जो हमारे adjacent angles होंगे उनका sum क्या होगा? 180 degree. अब इसको भी कोई आपको याद करने की जरूरत नहीं है. इसको अगर मैं simple आपको class seventh के concepts अगर मैं आपको समझाना चाहूँ, in class seventh you people have studied that if two parallel lines are there and one transversal is there, fine. ये parallel lines हैं मेरी क्योंकि parallelogram है और इसको मैं transversal मान रही हूँ. So in this case First thing we have learned that corresponding angles are equal. You have learned alternate interior angles are equal. And sum of co-interior angles. These are co-interior angles. This and this. They are co-interior angles. So their sum is 180 degree. So same thing is applicable for the parallelogram. Because in this we are having two parallel sides. And one side will act as transversal. So these are either you can say it as co-interior angle, but in case of parallelogram, they are said as adjacent angles. Right? Sum of adjacent angle is 180 degree. And the last point is diagonals bisect each other. Now, what is the meaning of bisect? Bisect. Bi means two. Set means cut. So bisect means two cut. And these are not normal cuts. These are two equal cuts. So diagonals bisect each other. मतलब अगर इसमें diagonals के लिए diagonals दिख रहे हैं आपको, AC एक diagonal है और एक diagonal क्या है? BD. दो diagonals हैं. तो जो AC वाला diagonal है, वो BD को two equal parts में cut कर रहा है. इस AC diagonal को अगर आप ध्यान दें, तो ये जो आपका AC diagonal है, ये BD को दो equal part में cut कर रहा है. कौन से दो equal part हैं? OD and OB. Similarly, जो ये BD diagonal है, ये AC को two equal parts में कट कर रहा है OA and OC तो दोनों ही diagonals एक दूसरे को equal parts में कट कर रहे हैं इसलिए हम बोलते हैं diagonals bisect each other bisect कर रहे हैं मतलब two equal parts में कट कर रहे हैं तो OB is equal to OB and OA is equal to OC ठीक है तो आप लोगों ने अभी तक तीन quadrilaterals की properties अच्छे से समझ ली हैं जो trapezium वो जिसमें one pair of opposite sides are parallel only one pair is needed. एक से ज़्यादा इसलिए parallelogram है. इसके अंदर two pair of opposite sides are parallel. So can we say it's a trapezium? Yes, because in trapezium we only need one. And here if we are getting more, then we don't have any issue. अगर आपको ज़्यादा properties मिल रही हैं तो कोई problem नहीं है. कम property मिलने पे आपको problem हो सकती है, ठीक है? तो इसको मैं trapezium में एक बार तो बोल सकती हूँ. क्योंकि मुझे इसमें एक pair of opposite sides तो parallel दिख रही हैं. This can also be said as trapezium. Fine, but this can't be said as parallelogram. So, ये आपकी parallelogram की चार important properties मैं main रिलाइज करवा देती हूँ. That opposite sides are equal and parallel. Opposite angles are equal. Sum of adjacent angle is 180 degree. मतलब angle A plus angle B 180 degree होगा. Angle B plus angle C 180 degree होगा. Angle C plus angle D 180 degree. Angle B plus angle A variety degree. So these all were pairs of adjacent angles. And the last one is diagonals bisect each other. आपको इस property को बहुत अच्छे समझ लेना है कि diagonals कैसे एक दूसरे को bisect करते हैं. Fine. Now I will explain you some special parallelograms. अब आगे जो हम तीन quadrilateral और पढ़ने जा रहे हैं वो हमारे क्या हैं? Special parallelograms. They are not simple quadrilaterals. They are in the category of Special parallelogram. Parallelogram को वैसे short form में लिखते हैं। ठीक है तो अगर कहीं मैं ये लाइन ये सुबह यूज़ करूँ, then you people have to understand that this is parallelogram. Fine. So now I am going to explain you some special parallelograms. Now here I have drawn some special parallelograms. Fine. Uh, one is rhombus, one is rectangle, and the other one is square. अच्छा जब मैं इसको पैरेलोग्राम बोल रही हूँ, 
तो डेफिनेटली पैरलोग्राम की जितनी भी प्रॉपर्टीज हैं वो सब इसमें है ऑल आर है ऑल दिस फोर प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ पैरलोग्राम इन रोमस आल्सो अपोजिट साइड्स आर इक्वल एंड पैरेलल अपोजिट एंगल्स आर इक्वल सम ऑफ एडजेसेंट एंगल्स इज 1 डिग्री डायगोनल्स बाय से ईच अदर सिमिलरली इन रेक्टेंगल आल्सो ऑल दिस प्रॉपर्टीज आर फॉलोड सिमिलरली इन स्क्वायर आल्सो ऑल दिस फोर प्रॉपर्टीज आर फॉलोड सो दे ऑल आर अ कैटेगरी ऑफ पैरलोग्राम दिस इज आल्सो अ पैरलोग्राम दिस इज आल्सो अ पैरलोग्राम एंड दिस इज आल्सो अ पैरलोग्राम बट दे आर सम स्पेशल पैरलोग्राम इफ आई एम कॉलिंग देम सम स्पेशल पैरलोग्राम देन डेफिनेटली they are having some special properties other than this parallelogram is parallelogram mein jitni char properties hain wo to in sab mein hai hi iske alawa inki kuch special properties hain jiski wajah se inhe special parallelogram kaha jata hai ya fir inko ek different naam mila hua hai fine sabse pehle agar main rombus ki baat karu to jaise main parallelogram mein humne kya padha tha opposite sides hai लेकिन इस रोमबस की स्पेशल प्रॉपर्टी ये है कि इस रोमबस की सारी साइड्स इक्वल होती है दिस इज स्पेशल एंड डिफरेंट फ्रॉम पैरेललोग्राम ठीक है आप रोमबस को तो पैरेललोग्राम बोल सकते हो पर पैरेललोग्राम को रोमबस नहीं बोल सकते क्यों क्योंकि पैरेललोग्राम की चारों साइडें बराबर नहीं है इसको इसको रोमबस ये कब बना पैरेललोग्राम रोमबस का कब ट्रांसफॉर्म हुआ है व्हेन इट्स ऑल साइड्स आर equal so this is the first special property of rhombus that all sides of rhombus are equal and the second one the diagonals are this sign is for perpendicular ye kya sign kis ka hai perpendicular ka sign hai theek hai to the diagonals are perpendicular bisector of each other yahan pe jo diagonals hain wo simple bisect kar rahe hain matlab bisect to kar rahe hain यहाँ पे भी बाइसेक्ट कर रहे हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे नहीं 90 डिग्री मैंने आपको नहीं बताया था यहाँ पे कैसे है परपेंडिकुलर है 90 डिग्री में सो दीज आर द टू इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ रोमबस फर्स्ट प्रॉपर्टी दैट ऑल साइड्स आर इक्वल एंड डायगनल्स आर परपेंडिकुलर बाइसेक्टर ऑफ ईच अदर सो दीज टू प्रॉपर्टीज मेक इट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम पैरोग्राम एंड दिस वर्ल्ड कॉल्ड अ नेम रोमबस आप अगर इसकी शेप ध्यान से देखें तो आपको इसका काजू का नीचे से दिखाई दे रहा होगा Which may be a favorite sweet of any one of you. Fine. तो आपको इसको ध्यान से देखना है कि ये जो काजू कतली है आपकी जो कि रोमबस है ठीक है उस काजू कतली और ये रोमबस जो आपका सेम ही चीज है ये पैरोग्राम से कैसे अलग है क्या स्पेशल है इस काजू कतली में इस काजू कतली में क्या स्पेशल है इसकी सारी साइड इक्वल है एंड प्लस डायग्नल फॉर परपेंडिकुलर बाई सेक्टर ऑफ ईच अदर तो अब जब भी आप कभी काजू कतली खाए तो उसको ध्यान से देखें कि क्या वो हमारा रोमबस की प्रॉपर्टीज को सेटिस्फाई कर रहा है क्या उसकी सारी साइड इक्वल है क्या उसके डायग्नोस पर पेंडिकुलर बाइसेक्टर है दैट यू हैव टू चेक फाइन नाउ नेक्स्ट इज अवर रेक्टेंगल दिस इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द स्पेशल पैरेललोग्राम अच्छा इस रेक्टेंगल में क्या डिफरेंट है पैरेललोग्राम से यहां पे मैंने लिखा है ईच एंगल इज 90 डिग्री इन अ रेक्टेंगल दिस एंगल ए इज 90 डिग्री बी इज आल्सो 90 डिग्री सी इज आल्सो 90 डिग्री एंड डी इज ऑल्सो 90 डिग्री आप अगर यहां पर देखें तो यहां मैंने आपको बताया था कि ये दोनों ऑप्टिक्यूज एंगल है और ये दोनों एक्यूट एंगल है तो यही डिफरेंट है रेक्टेंगल में फ्रॉम पैरेलोग्राम दैट इट्स ईच एंगल इज 90 डिग्री बट सी इन दिस केस ऑल्सो इट विल सेटिस्फाई द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ पैरेलोग्राम अपोजिट एंगल्स विल बी इक्वल एंड सम ऑफ एडजस्टेंट विल बी 180 डिग्री 90 प्लस 90 180 90 प्लस 90 180. So this is satisfying both the properties of parallelogram. And the second special property of rectangle is diagonals are equal. मैंने आपको यहाँ पे ये तो बताया था कि diagonals bisect करते हैं. पर ये नहीं कहा था कि इनके diagonals equal होते हैं. Fine. आपको diagram तो देख के भी लग रहा होगा कि BD diagonal is having a greater length as compared to AC diagonal. But in this diagram you can see that AC and BD diagonal are of Equal length, fine. AC and BD are of equal length. So, ये दो special property है rectangle की एक तो अगर इस parallelogram को मैं थोड़ा सा सीधा कर दूँ, इसके angles को सीधा कर दूँ मैं, तो ये parallelogram क्या बन जाएगा? Rectangle बन जाएगा, ठीक है? क्योंकि इसके सारे angles हैं क्या बन जाएंगे? 90 degree, बाकी सारी चीजें हैं, opposite sides are equal and parallel, diagonals bisect भी करेंगे, पर साथ ही साथ इसके diagonals equal भी हैं, ठीक है? 
तो ये था आपका रोमस ये था रेक्टेंगल एंड द लास्ट वन बट द हीरो ऑफ ऑल क्वाड्रिलेटरल इज स्क्वायर बिकॉज वाई आई एम कॉलिंग इट हीरो ऑफ क्वाड्रिलेटरल बिकॉज इट कंजस्ट ऑफ ऑल द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑल द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ऑल द फाइव क्वाड्रिलेटरल विच वी हैव स्टडी ठीक है जैसे पैरलोग्राम के भी चारों प्रॉपर्टीज में आने चारों के चारों अपोजिट साइड आर इक्वल एंड पैरल अपोजिट एंगल्स आर इक्वल सम ऑफ एडजेंट एंगल इज वन एटी डिग्री ठीक है ए प्लस बी वन एटी बी प्लस सी वन एटी डिग्री सी प्लस डी वन एटी डिग्री डायनस वाइस एक ईच अदर डायनस भी वाइस एक कर रहे हैं ओ ए इज इक्वल टू ओ सी ओ बी इज इक्वल टू ओ डी इसके साथ जो रोमस की प्रॉपर्टी थी दैट ऑल साइड आर इक्वल वो भी है इसमें All sides are equal. Diagonals are perpendicular bisector of each other. इसमें वो भी शामिल है कि diagonals कैसे bisect हो रहे हैं? Perpendicular हो रहे हैं. फिर each angle is 90 degree. वो भी इसमें शामिल है. And each like in that angle, each angle was 90 degree. Similarly, in square also each angle is 90 degree. And diagonals are equal. और इसके diagonals भी equal है. AC और BD equal है. That's why I'm calling it hero of all the Quadrilateral because it is having all the properties, all the characteristics of all the quadrilaterals which we have studied till now. जहाँ तक आप इसमें trapezium की भी property डाल सकते हैं, that one pair of opposite sides are parallel. आप इसमें kite की भी properties डाल सकते हैं, that two pairs of adjacent sides are equal. Fine. That's why square is called hero of the quadrilateral in which You can write all the properties of all the quadrilaterals. Fine. अच्छा इसमें एक relation होता है कि जैसे आप rhombus को square बोल सकते हो? नहीं. Square जो है हमारा, अगर मैं square की बात करूँ, तो square को आप we can call parallelogram, we can call square a parallelogram also. Square को हम rectangle भी बोल सकते हैं. स्क्वायर को हम रोमस भी बोल सकते हैं स्क्वायर को हम प्रतिज्ञा भी बोल सकते हैं कुछ भी बोल सकते हैं लेकिन रोमस को हम स्क्वायर नहीं बोल सकते क्यों क्योंकि रोमस के ईच एंगल नाइंटी भी नहीं होते रेक्टेंगल को भी हम स्क्वायर नहीं बोल सकते क्यों नहीं बोल सकते क्योंकि रेक्टेंगल की चारों साइड इक्वल नहीं होती है पैरलोग्राम को भी हम स्क्वायर नहीं बोल सकते क्यों क्योंकि इसकी ना तो चारों साइड इक्वल है ना ईच एंगल नाइनटी भी है ये कुछ भी सेटिस्फाई नहीं सकता बट स्क्वायर को हम सब बोल सकते हैं स्क्वायर को एक बार तो मैं पैरोग्राम बोल सकती हूँ एक बार मैं इसे रिजन भी बोल सकती हूँ एक बार मैं इसे रेक्टेंगल रोमस एनीथिंग आई कैन से टू द स्क्वायर फाइन बिकॉज इट इज हैविंग ऑल द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ ऑल अदर क्वाड्रेटर्स सो स्टूडेंट्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑल द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर वाई स्टडी दिस कॉन्सेप्ट यू कैन सॉल्व क्वेश्चन एंड इफ यू आर फेसिंग एनी क्वेरी देन यू कैन आस्क इन कमेंट बॉक्स These are the basic concepts which you have to, which should, which you should not memorize. You have to understand it by heart. That how these properties are formed and how it is related to the practical life. ठीक है? Practically भी अगर आप इसको करके देखना चाहते हैं, तो आप एक square paper cutting कर सकते हैं. Then you can measure all the properties. You can check whether actually it is actually actually all the properties are satisfied in that or not. And for any queries, you can write in comment box. Thank you, students.